Hello, everybody. Welcome back to uh, the show. Today, we're continuing our series of ranking the number one songs here with Randall Nelson. We've been doing this since 1965. Uh, today's year is 1974. Uh, not a banner year by any means. Uh, 35 songs we're going to rank today. This is the most we've done in any particular year. 35 songs made it to number one in the 52 weeks. So there was a lot of fluctuation. Nothing really held down the big spot for very long. And when, when you uh, when, when you hear some of these songs, you'll know why. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> some of them were able to get to uh, the top of the charts, but in a bad year, I guess anything's possible. Randy, what'd you think? Uh, pretty brutal year, huh? Yeah, it was a brutal year. A lot of dreck in this, this year. And it seems like any song from 73 in the top 10 might have been number one this year. As far as <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Yeah. yeah. So and there are there were there were a few songs I really I liked, but uh yeah, very few. A lot of them that were pretty bad. And a lot of them that epitomized the era too, with the early disco and some of the just simple inane pop that was popular at the time and novelty song here and there a couple instrumentals that are back from uh we've had a run of them for a while and then they tapered off and now we have a couple more so it's just uh whatever was popular made it to the top of the charts that we're, that's what we're ranking today i know we take a little bit of grief about how terrible these songs are but we knew that going in that you're not always going to get a number one songs all the way through you're going to have to weed them out and, and put them in some kind of order and that's the fun of it so uh, please check out our, our past episodes. If you want to pick a year out anywhere from 65 through 73 in the past, we're doing one more after this 1975, and that'll be the end of this particular series. So we appreciate uh, all the feedback, all the regular people that always comment. Uh, we like uh, getting back to them and a lot of them leave lists and we're, we're pleased with that as well. So today we're going to go in the uh, order of Randy, then myself. Randy's going to do his 35 through 21 to start off. Then I'll do mine. And then we'll do 20 to 16, 15 through 11. And then when we get to the top 10, of course, we'll go one at a time until we get to the top. And then we'll have our five honorable mentions, uh, five favorites or good songs that we'd like to shout out that never made it to number one. So Randy, kick it off. It's a little long winded here today, but there's so many songs we don't want to keep going back and forth. So just, Give us your 35 to uh, 21, please. All right. So number 35 is Billy Don't Be a Hero by Bo Donaldson and the Haywoods. Uh, they actually had two other top 40 hits in 1974, but this is the worst, and this is the one that made it to number one. It's kind of a sing-songy rhyme about someone that doesn't come back from the war, which a lot of people took it as the Vietnam War, but it was actually written about the Civil War. But uh, it's kind of cheery pop drivel that doesn't fit the tone of the song. I didn't like it when it came out, and I still don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> and my number 34, which has been called the worst number one song of all time. Glenn would probably agree. That's You're Having My Baby by Paul Anka. Someone called Paul Anka the poor man's Neil Sedaka. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But, yeah, fits. But, it's like having my baby, what a lovely way of saying how much you love me. It's all about him. That's all, but that's the main <laughs> problem with this song. It's like, she's just there to have the baby. I mean, he even references, references abortion saying she didn't have to keep it, but she loves him so much. It's, uh, it's just awful. Yeah. 33, the streak, Ray Stevens, which was a big thing back in 74. I mean, they even had a streaker at the Oscars. And right. David Niven had the famous quip, you know, the biggest laugh he's ever going to get is showing his shortcomings or something, <laughs> something to that effect. Exactly. But I always hated when Ray Stevens sang in that kind of, he tried to make up these voices to sing like the character and they were just annoying because he really did, can sing. But, you know, that's yeah. my number 33. 32. The Night Chicago Died by Paper Lace. Paper Lace actually was the, was the first group to, to uh, sing Billy Don't Be a Hero. It was the number one hit in the UK. And I don't know if that's good to have on your resume or not. <laughs> but this was set during the Chicago Gang Wars, during Prohibition, loosely based on the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And 
I say loosely because there's a lot of exaggeration in here. The, all the hand clapping, the kind of insipid lyrics. It's kind of like trying to be an all that jazz musical song. I don't know. They have this like, na 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 na. The night Chicago. Right. It has a happier ending than Billy Don't Be a Hero, at least for one family, anyway. So that's my, what was that? 32. 31, Angie Baby uh, by Helen Reddy. Uh, kind of elevator pop with a little kind of spookiness. It's a story about Angie, who's a touched little girl that's always listening to the radio, living in a world of make believe. Well, maybe she was i don't know but there's a strange boy that comes over and then he disappears i don't know it's so nice to be insane no one asks you to explain as a lyric in the song it's like i don't know being strange just doesn't make it a good song it's just right i, I didn't care for it oh 30 i can help by billy swan which He's a country singer that he had seven or eight country songs, but uh, this was a crossover hit, which is kind of big back in the day. It's pretty awful. Sample lyrics. If your child, if your child needs a daddy, I can help. It would sure do me good to do you good. Let me help. <laughs> I don't know if that's a pickup line. It would work. But, uh, it's a country song that made it in the pop charts and it's pretty awful. <laughs> so, I'm saying that a lot, but it's pretty awful. Yeah. 29, Dark Lady by Cher. Now, this is about a New Orleans fortune teller, and the protagonist in the song goes to see her. Fortune teller tells her that uh, her lover's been unfaithful and she should go and leave him and never come back. Well, she does come back and finds out he's been cheating with the fortune teller, kills the fortune teller and her lover. I, I kept thinking if the fortune teller was really that good, she would have seen this coming. I don't know. Yeah. It, hope it didn't spoil the ending for anybody. That's all right. <laughs> They're not missing much. All right. Now, number 28 is another song that's been called the worst song of all time, but I had it a little higher up, and that's Seasons in the Sun by Terry Jacks. Um, I kind of remember this. Sometimes you remember songs because of different things, and First time I was in driver's ed, first time I ever drove a car, the song was playing on the radio. I don't know why I remember yeah. that. It's actually adapted from a tune, La Morabonne, by Belgian singer-songwriter Jacques Brel. The singer is dying and tell those all around him goodbye. There's a lot of songs about dying in the 70s, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Maybe it's lost in the translation. Maybe it sounds more exciting in French. I don't know. But... <laughs> That's my 28. 27 is I Honestly Love You by Olivia Newton-John. I actually like some of her songs. I liked her cover of the Dylan tune, If Not For You. Mm -hmm. But this one's kind of a gooey love song that just keeps piling on the syrup and it's got a <laughs> rudimentary piano and strings written by Peter Allen and Jeff Berry. It's kind of a song about let's not, let's talk, let's just talk about cheating, but not actually cheat. And then she says, I love you in a whisper. And that's the number one song in 1974. Yeah. 26, uh, Rock Your Baby by George McRae, a song written by two members of KC and the Sunshine Band. But they thought KC couldn't sing high enough for, for this song. So they got George McRae to come in. So it's, it's one of those early disco hits. But it sounds like a lot of the others. It's it's not uh, memorable to me. All right. <laughs> it, 25, Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Suede. It's the Swedish pop group that took a decent B.J. Thomas song and basically took these perceived jungle chants, Uga Chaka, Uga Uga, Uga Chaka, <laughs> put it all over it. And supposedly that was an improvement. Well, I, I guess people liked it because it got to number one, but I prefer the B.J. Thomas version. Right. All right. Number 24, Kung Fu Fighting by Carl Perkins. What is the guy's name? Carl, Carl Douglas. Carl Douglas. <laughs> I don't know why did I write that out. <laughs> Only in 1974 could you get a song born out of a TV show, which was Kung Fu mm -hmm. with David Carradine. But 
but it's actually from Britain. So maybe it was on the movies that were coming out around that time, the Bruce Lee type movies. But right. They have some things like Funky China Man from Funky Chinatown in there. You got these who's and ha's, these chopping sounds, these ori oriental riffs like. Dun, 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 dun. And actually, no one actually knows why they're fighting, but everybody's doing it. Yeah. All right, number 23, TSOP by MFSB, which is The Sound of Philadelphia by Mother, Father, Sister, Brother. Yep. We got about 30 musicians playing on the song. It's basically an instrumental that they laid these backing vocals over by the third degrees, the three degrees, I mean. It was, it was the house band at Gamble and Huff's Sigma Sound Studios, and it was actually created as the theme for Soul Train. Right. Not, not terrible, but I just don't care for it that much. Uh, number 22, You're 16 by Ringo Starr. I kind of, I don't know why, I guess like I kind of have problems with these like I did with uh, Go Away Little Girl, Steve Lawrence singing it. Mm -hmm. you know, this is a song with a 33 year old, which is what Ringo was at the time, singing about his love for a 16 year old girl, which, you know, to Ringo's credit, he didn't write it. Johnny Burnett wrote it. But I guess he still does it in concert. So if you're yeah. 80, I guess you can say, oh, grandpa likes the little girl. Maybe it's not as bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 21, getting down there. 21, The Way We Were by Barbara Streisand. She starts out humming. Which goes, mm -hmm. All I could think about was I got in trouble in third grade for humming to a song. Mrs. Toot made me go to the principal's office, but I'm not going to hold that against Barbara. But I've always wondered what watercolor memories mean and some of the lyrics in this song. All I can say is it was written for the movie the way we were. Movie sad, song sad. Very good. <laughs> I think the only one, well, I have two, I think, or three. I have a few that are, are different, but for the most part, we're, we're in harmony on some of these dread, dreadful songs here. My number 35 is The Streak. I put it dead last. Uh, novelty, capitalizing on the fad or the craze that was going on that particular year. People running around naked in public. Just uh, horrific stuff. You mentioned the Oscars. You see it at ball games. They'd interrupt the game. A streaker would be running across the field with no clothes on. Just... Uh, not a fond memory of the 70s at all. I, I took the bottom rung. Number 34 is the same one you had at 34. Glenn Kellaway's favorite song of that decade, You're Having My Baby by Paul Anka. Not only did it make it number one, it was number one for three weeks. What were the people thinking back then? Absolute dreck. <laughs> number, number 34. Number 33 is Angie Baby. I always hated this song. Uh, I must not be a Helen Reddy fan because... I noticed a lot of the years here, she had like three years in a row, number ones, and all of them are ranking near or close to the bottom. I Am Woman's probably her signature song, but I'm not enamored with that either. Uh, I think the one song I actually like is the one she did from Jesus Christ Superstar, I Don't Know How to Love Him. Didn't she have a hit with that uh, mm -hmm. minor hit? And uh, that was okay. But Angie Baby's terrible. Delta Dawn the year before was horrible. Um, she chose bad material but made it work for herself. Number 32 is Cher's Dark Lady, another hideous song, uh, Fortune Teller, Murder Ballad. You, you went into all the details and I'm not gonna dwell on it. It does have the Ventures keyboard player uh, accompanying there for Ventures fans. Number 31, I guess, yeah. Billy Don't Be a Hero, which you had at the bottom. Mine's close to the bottom. You mentioned the Civil War that people at the time thought it was the Vietnam War, a guy getting killed in action, Billy. It's not very cutting edge. It's kind of a throwaway song, but people ate it up. Bo Donaldson was from Cincinnati, Ohio, and that was his claim to fame. Uh, right above it at number 30 is The Night Chicago Died, another hor horrific song, just fodder for uh, pe uh, pop radio back then. Uh, you, you used the word insipid. That's a perfect word for this song. It's a uh, fictional shootout between Chicago police and the Capone gang. Uh, paper lace, horrible. Into the 20s, we've got number 29, Billy Swan, I Can Help. Country pop crossover. Uh, he wrote songs for Mel Tillis, 
Waylon Jennings, Conway Twitty, among others. He was a songwriter and he struck gold with uh, I Can Help. Evidently he hung out with Chris Christopherson and uh, Rita Coolidge as well. They were at one another's weddings or something. So he was hung out in good circles, but that song is horrendous. Number 28, Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Suede. You know, you're right, the B.J. Thomas song is much better, the original. And I, I never liked the Uga Chucka, Uga, Uga, Uga Chucka. That just drove me insane. And it was all over the radio in 74. Every hour they'd play it. Uh, number 27 is one that you haven't mentioned yet, but I, I was never a fan. I just thought it was a bad uh, combination here. Then came you with Dion Warwick and the Spinners. I like both of them separately. I just didn't like them together. Uh, I thought it was an odd pairing, and I, I still feel that way to, today. Maybe I need to re-listen to it. Number 26, Seasons in the Sun, Terry Jacks. You did a good job describing that. It originally, that French song by Jacques Brel, translated into English by Rod McEwen, of all people. Uh, Terry Jacks was a Canadian singer, singer at that time. And I actually liked this song when it came out. I remember saying, oh, this is a cool song. But the, over the years, it's uh, lost its appeal to me. It just doesn't work for me now. Definitely not a not a classic. Uh, we had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. Sing along song. Twenty five is Olivia Newton John's "I Honestly Love You." This is just vintage soft rock. Uh, I like Olivia Newton John. Good on the eyes, cool in Greece with the leather outfit, Australian pop singer. Um, but this, you know, if you like extra syrup on your pancakes, this is the one, man. And it was a Grammy Award winner for Record of the Year, which is incredible. 24, Sunshine on My Shoulders, John Denver. I like John Denver. I like other songs by John Denver. This one's sort of just kind of flat to me. It's relaxing. It's easy listening, but it's not my favorite John Denver song. Sunshine on My Shoulders makes me happy, makes me cry, all that good stuff. Number 23 is Rock the Boat by the Hughes Corporation. Another one of these precursor to disco, dance, pop, hybrid songs, a little R&B in there. Those are only top 10 hit. Uh, rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. It's got a little cute interplay there. Uh, not a big fan, but it fits in the era for sure. And then number 22 and 21 are the two instrumentals here. You mentioned one of them, TSOP, The Sound of Philadelphia by MFSB with the Three Degrees. Philly Soul, the Soul Train theme song, Gamble and Huff, all that stuff. Philadelphia uh, International Records. This was played at all the discos. I mean, it was popular, obviously, for the Soul Train connection. And at number 21, I've got Love's Theme, which was Love Unlimited Orchestra, written by Barry White. Early precursor, again, to disco. It was used by ABC Sports for its golf coverage back in the day. Uh, it's 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 okay. It's mediocre listening elevator music, as well. So that takes care of my thirty five through twenty one. Now we're going to do twenty to sixteen. All right. Uh, my number twenty is "Rock Me Gently" by Andy Kim. It's supposed to be this sensual song about their love making, but it's got lines like, "And on your face, I see a trace of love." I don't even know what that means, but. Uh, Got these annoying background singers in it. It's supposed to be about seduction, but it's a little too bubblegummy for me. But yeah. maybe it's a little too bubblegummy because Andy Kim did help write uh, Sugar Sugar by the Archies. Uh, right. But uh, and my number 19, I picked a different John Denver song. I picked Annie's song. Uh, I like John Denver, but some of his biggest hits I found, find kind of boring. This one, he kind of extends the notes on some of the wor words and I don't know. I do like the instrumentation, but it just, I don't really like the way he sings that song. It's kind of boring to me, any song. Uh, number 18, The Locomotion by Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, we're an American band and we've run out of ideas. Let's take a 1962 pop song by Little Eva and talk about this brand new old dance craze that everyone's doing. Yeah, it's a long way from their sex, drugs, and rock and roll, but that's my 18. Yep. 17, Feel Like Making Love by Roberta Flack. She had two great number ones in a row. This one is just kind of boring to me. It's a song about lovemaking. 
it seems ponderous, even though it's less than three minutes long. But uh, 1974 seemed to put the kibosh on even some great artists as well. And 16, I had the other uh, instrumental, Love's Theme, Love Unlimited Orchestra, shows off Barry White as a composer. It's actually his first number one hit was one that he didn't sing on. Uh, yeah originally going to have words and I guess they later did make one with words but it's got some beautiful strings but not my favorite all right cool uh my number 20 uh kung fu fighting by Carl Douglas another unlikely number one uh capitalizing on the Bruce Lee films and the kung fu tv series uh Carl Douglas was a Jamaican vocalist he come out in the outfit and the, I think there was a video of him chopping, doing chop suey on people and stuff. Just a song for the times. It, it, it doesn't translate well to today. Number 19 is the Ringo song, You're 16, You're Beautiful and You're Mine. A cover of the uh, 1960 hit by Johnny Burnett, a rockabilly guy who died young at age 30 in a boating accident. Just an early rock tune. Ringo, you know, has a tendency to bring back these songs he, he's good at it it's just it's not very interesting it's not very creative or original uh you know the line you come on like a dream peaches and cream lips like strawberry wine you're 16 you're beautiful in your mind you got harry nielsen on uh, backing vocals and nikki hopkins on piano so ringo's still surrounding himself with uh good good folks here number what 17 yeah, The Locomotion, Grand Funk. Uh, you mentioned Little Eva. It was originally a hit for her back in the early 60s. She was the babysitter of Carol King and Jerry Goffin, who wrote the original song. And uh, Grand Funk tried to spice it up and give it a little rockier edge, which is okay, but it's just out of their realm and not a, not a favorite by any means. They had so many better songs that fit their style. Number 16 is Rock Me Gently by Andy Kim, the king of uh, bubblegum pop. He wrote songs for bubblegum like the Archies. He has a song called Baby I Love You, which is a sappy song. And there's another one, Rock Me Gently. Catchy, but mediocre at best. And he, he sounds a little bit like Neil Diamond with his voice on this yeah. record, I think, to me. It's like a Neil Diamond. I think that a lot of people thought it was Neil Diamond. Maybe that's why it went to number one. And number 15 is Feel Like Making Love. Roberta Flack, who always, you know, got a great voice, pleasant, easy listening, little touches of soul in r and I, I like her sound, but there's really nothing amazing about the song. It falls into the middle of the pack here for me at, at number 15. It did get three Grammy nominations uh, as well. So there we go. Now we're going to go 15 to 11. All right. My number 15 you had earlier is Sunshine on My Shoulder by John Denver. Supposedly wrote this song while surviving a Minnesota winter, missing the sun. Uh, he always seemed to be genuine in his singing, but uh, he's, in this song, he says, sunshine makes him high. He also talks about Rocky Mountain High in another song. I guess he sing, likes to sing songs about getting high. I don't know, John did yeah. <laughs> That was 15. 14 is another one you've had earlier. Is Rock the Boat by the Hughes Corporation. It's disco built on this lush slick danceable groove but there's also kind of kind of a bit of hearkening back to 60s r&b in this one with a little bit of caribbean rhythm uh, their name of their group was a, actually a bad pun on howard hughes so it's but it was like h-u-e-s hughes corporation right but they got a catchy chorus but the thing you have to do is you need to watch the youtube of them doing this song because the one guy uh, he could learn some dance moves from Elaine from Seinfeld because it's not very good. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But... Uh, I haven't, but I know Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. uh, okay, uh, no, the 13, uh, Nothing from Nothing by Billy Preston. A little bit similar to his previous number one, which is Will It Go Around the Circles? Yeah. It's actually the first song ever performed on Saturday Night Live. Good one. And, but it's kind of kind of got this ragtime vaudeville-ish beginning and then got the barrel house piano, then the horns come in. It's kind of unique, but I don't know, it's nothing special to me. But that's my 13. 
My number 12 is Show and Tell by Al Wilson, remake of a song originally done by Johnny Mathis. I actually have this album the song's on. He really lets it out on the course, and it's kind of a slight song, but I think it's elevated by uh, Al Wilson's vocals. Yeah. And then 11, a song I guess I like a little bit better more than you, is Then Came You by Dionne Warwick and the Spinners. Uh, some nice upbeat pop infused soul featuring Dion Warwick and he, the lead from the spinners, uh, Bobby Smith singing on it, Tom Bell produced. And he combined these two artists, and that was actually their first number one is together, but they did have a lot better songs on their own, both of those artists. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I, I like the spinners on their own, I like Dion Warwick for what she does on her own. It's just it's one of them, one of them things, it's a personal thing. Number 15. For me, is nothing from nothing. Billy Preston, you mentioned Saturday Night Live, uh, back to back years for Billy hitting number one. Uh, it's been used in commercials, I believe, too. Nothing special. 14 is Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe by Barry White, known for that deep baritone bass kind of voice, uh, kind of ooze sex. The women love Barry White. He's sweating up there on stage and big, heavy set dude. The, he had the magic when it comes to those sexy uh, R and B type songs, and that's that's one right there. He had a string of hits. Number thirteen is "Rock Your Baby," which you had back by George McRae, uh, written by Harry Casey or produced by Harry Casey of the Casey and Sunshine Band. I like the groove of this song. I know it's it's not incredible or anything. It's early disco, and I like. Uh, I just like the way it sounds compared to some of the other direct we've talked about. Come on, take me in your arms, rock your band. I like the, uh, I like the way they sort of have a, a background kind of harmonies with it. Uh, 12 is the same 12 that you had show and tell by Al Wilson. Uh, I like his vocal here too. It's kind of an easy listening soul sound and uh, Johnny Mathis did it originally, which I've never heard the Mathis version, but I like the Al Wilson, uh, version so number 12 i think it's a, a pretty decent song so let's say that 12 of the uh 35 songs would get a positive thumbs up from me here uh number 11 is i shot the sheriff by eric clapton which is the cover of bob marley's uh reggae classic off the uh, 461 ocean boulevard by eric uh soft rock little bluesy guitar it's not my favorite clapton by any means but uh, it's it's okay it's it's you know, the song he plays in concert from time to time, and he's known for it. So I'm going to give it number 11. Now we're into the top 10. We're going to go one at a time, starting with number 10. All right. Well, my number 10 is I Shot the Sheriff by Eric Clapton. He got a lot of flack from it because, you know, that Bob Marley didn't actually have the hit with it. It was him. Yeah. And I think Bob Marley didn't even hit like number 50 something as the nearest he ever got to the top 40. But, uh, mm -hmm. I do like Bob Marley's version better, but this was not really a reggae song the way Eric Clapton yeah. does it. It's got this more elaborate instrumentation and stuff like that, but uh, it's not bad. But you know, like I said, it's not Bob Marley's version, but you, I don't know. He got a lot too much flack for that, I thought. Yeah. Um, my number 10 is Whatever Gets You Through the Night by John Lennon off the Walls and Bridges album. We got Elton John on here as well, harmony vocals, piano, organ, Bobby Keys with a tenor sax, Jim Keltner on drums. Uh, evidently, the story is that John likes to channel surf at night, flipping around. He heard this guy, Reverend Ike, uh, come on and say, whatever gets you through tonight. He wrote it down, created a song out of it, and the rest is history. I mean, it, it's not classic Lennon, but it's, it's definitely... Uh, a decent song and uh, I won't shut it off when it comes on the radio. So number 10. All right. My number nine is you haven't done nothing by Stevie wonder. He had 10 number one hits. It's not bad. This is probably this, the least memorable, at least for me. Uh, mm -hmm. It says a lot about 1974, even Stevie wonder had a hit that doesn't stick in your head. <laughs> That's uh it does have the Jackson 5 singing back up on there, and it's got some nice bass lines on it. But that's my yeah. number nine. I have it slightly higher. My number nine is You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet by Bachman Turner Overdrive. 
written by Randy Bachman, uh, towards a Canadian rock band off the Not Fragile album. Uh, it's known for that infamous stutter in the chorus. You, you, you ain't seen nothing yet, you know. So it's a big hit, still played today on classic rock radio, one of their more famous songs. Uh, I enjoy it. So it's number nine. My number eight is Whatever Gets You Through the Night by John Lennon. Uh, last Beatle to reach number one. Uh, imagine only got it to number three. Yeah. It's a song about coping with, you know, with the slush orchestration. Elton John sings back up, like you said, and plays piano. Although in the mix, he kind of almost sounds as loud as Lennon sometimes on the on it. Yeah. But uh, and supposedly either he had a bet with John Lennon that it was going to be a number one song. And John Lennon lost the bet and actually appeared with him at Madison Square Garden, came out and sang the song with Elton John and made good on his bet. Uh, so that's my number eight. My number eight is one you had a ways back. I actually like this song, although it's not my kind of music or genre of music. It's Barbara Streisand's The Way We Were. I think it's a wonderful rendition of, of the song. I think she really belts it out at, at times. Of course, it's uh, from the movie starring uh, Streisand and Robert Redford. Uh, I don't know what was misty color water, misty watercolor memories are either. Uh, written by Marvin Hamlish and Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Uh, memories may be beautiful and yet what's too painful to remember, we simply choose to forget. I kind of like the lyrics in it most of the way and Barbara adds her special touch of you know, just make it more dramatic uh, than it needs to be, but that's that's what we have. For a Streisand song, it's uh, it's pretty good. I'll give it number eight. All right. Number seven, I have a little bit higher than you did, and that's uh, Can't Get Enough of Your Love by Barry White with Eleven Unlimited Orchestra. Uh, they had three singers, which uh, he ended up marrying one of them, uh, written about his wife, which was in the Love and Limit Orchestra. Uh, pretty simple lyrics, but I think Barry pulls it off with that amazing voice that he has. Yeah, it's the signature voice. I mean, you can pick that out. Nobody has a voice like Barry. My number seven is Annie's song from John Denver. This is one of my actually favorite John Denver songs, believe it or not. I know you ripped it pretty good, but that's okay. We're allowed to do that. Uh, I think it's a, a decent love song. He wrote it for his wife, Annie, at the time. And I like the uh, the lyrics, as corny as they are. He's talking about, he's using uh, senses and the surroundings to show how much he loves her. You fill up my senses like a night in the forest, like the mountains in springtime, like a walk in the rain, like a storm in the desert, like a sleepy blue ocean. You fill up my senses, come fill me again. I like the imagery of the song. Uh, I, I understand what he was going for, but uh, number seven, I, I put it maybe higher than it should be uh, but this is what it's about you got to go with what you think all right my number six is the joker by the steve miller band uh this may be heresy but i actually prefer the katie lang uh cover of the song but you know it, it borrowed lines from the clovers lovey dovey which uh i really uh you're the cutest thing I ever did see. I really love your peaches, want to shake your tree. Lovey dovey. That's that's in the lovey dovey song. I don't know if they got are they getting royalties for that. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but then you should go listen to the Clover's version of that. But I actually have it by a uh, guy who was in the Drifters. I can't think of his name now. Clyde McFadder. Clyde McFadder, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then he does a really good version of Lovey Dovey too, but it's a it's a fun song, you know. He's a space cowboy, he's a gangster of love, or, okay. and he's Maurice. <laughs> it's a fun song. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Uh, my number six is the one you mentioned a few back. Stevie Wonders, you haven't done nothing. It's classic funk. Uh, Jackson Five in the back there. Uh, I didn't realize it was actually a protest song directed at President Nixon. I, I read that here, and when you look at the lyrics, kind of works. It says here, "We are sick and tired of hearing your song." telling how you're going to change things from right from wrong because if you really want to hear our views you haven't done nothing and it goes jackson five saying da -da 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 -boo -do -up, and whatever they're singing in the background it, it's catchy it's not the best stevie wonder song but uh like the better steve the worst stevie wonder song is better than 
most of this other crap behind it. So that's number six for me. All right, uh, number five for me is Cats in the Cradle by Harry Chapin. Sentimental father-son song about how time slips away from us and we don't enjoy our time together like we should. Somebody, somebody call it a musical guilt trip, which I guess you can say that's what yeah. it is, but, but points out some of the problems we face and making time for things. And it's kind of a folk rock song with these nice musical textures, but the lyrics are the one, the thing that's important in this song. Yeah. Uh, my number five is Benny and the Jets, Elton John off the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album, uh, glam rock kind of feel about a fictional band. Uh, she's got electric boots, a mohair suit. You know, I read it in a magazine. Benny and the Jets. Uh, classic Elton from that era. So it makes my top five at number five. That's my number four is Benny and the Jets, which I still don't know what the lyrics of the song are. And I thought if I actually went and read them, I might get disappointed. <laughs> but supposedly it's like about a future with robotic musicians or something like that. But, you know, I don't know. I never, I never have really looked into the lyrics, but it's really a fun song. Uh, yeah. And I think uh, it's got these kind of strange piano chords that mm -hmm. start the thing, which may have helped to get to number one because it was kind of different from anything else. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. My number four. Uh, my number four is Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot, folk rock song about a woman having an affair, kind of sneaking around at the bar, hard drinking. Uh, I like the lyrics on this. this. Gordon Lightfoot's known for laying down some good lyrics. I can picture every move that a man could make getting lost in her loving is your first mistake. Uh, written about his relationship. With, from what I understand, it's Kathy Smith, who was the woman that was with, her, uh, with uh, John Belushi the night he overdosed. So she has a history of... Uh, being in the wrong spot at the wrong time, but that could be conjectured. I don't know if that's definitely, but that's what I wrote. That's what I read the song was written about. So I like Gordon Lightfoot in general, and that's one of his better tunes. Yeah, that's, that's number three for me, Sundown, Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, I, it's probably not in my top 10 Gordon Lightfoot songs, but it is a good good song. He had, he had a lot of great songs, though. Yeah. Uh, I like some of the earlier ones even better, but uh, it's kind of got this Creedon influenced swampy guitar, which has made it kind of unique. And you can hear the pain and venom in his voice. And I won't go on. You listed a lot of the other things people talked about in that song, but yeah. good song by Gordon. Yep. My number three is Cats in the Cradle, Harry Chapin. You mentioned it. Folk rock, uh, father who's not dedicating the amount of time he should to his son growing up and then he gets it back in spades later when the kid grows up dad i don't have time for you and then just a father-son relationship there's life lessons here important uh, meaning in the song i always liked it from the first time i heard it so it gets a high spot on my list at number three all right my number two band on the run paul mccartney and wings uh Great melody with this kind of experimental musical flourishes that uh, showed he could do more than this previous sappy love songs that he had done, like My Love. <laughs> but uh, it's got a cool beginning and a nice slide, slide guitar. I guess there was an edited version out there because that wasn't as long, but the radio stations played this for, I mean, played the main version mostly. And it was recorded in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Most of it, although they went back and did some of the orchestral parts in, in London. I guess he thought it would be cool to take his bandmates on like vacation to Lagos, Nigeria. They found out that the, I guess they didn't have internet then to check out on what the accommodations in the studio was going to be like. But uh, sounds like several song ideas that kind of thrown together, but it works. It's, it's uh, one of my favorite Paul McCartney songs, probably. Yeah, I have it also at number two. Uh, title track from the same album there, uh, Band on the Run. I like the arrangement because it's like three different styles of songs strung together. Uh, yeah, got that beginning where they're stuck inside these four walls and sort of lulls you into it. And then uh, if I ever get out of here, it moves up tempo. And then the rain exploded with a mighty crash. Uh, you can hear the changes in the tune as it goes along. 
Paul played a lot of different instruments. He was drumming on this. It was only Paul, Linda, and Denny Lane, for the most part, in the studio in Nigeria there. Uh, some of his demo tapes got stolen. I think he was held up at one point. There's all kinds of things that went wrong. And with the, the hotel accommodations were horrible. Uh, but they went to Nigeria. I guess that's what you get back in the 70s. All right, we're down to number one. Interesting. We're going to have different tunes here. Yeah, and I, I can't remember which one you haven't said yet, so I'm not sure what it is. I just had to look up the one you hadn't said because I couldn't remember either. Now I know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, my number one is You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet by Bachman Turner Overdrive. It was one of the first albums I got was Not Fragile. I was in the Record Club of America, and this song was on that one. Uh, it's got this great guitar riff. He does that stuttering, which sounds a little bit like uh, the Who's My Generation. Right. But actually, But actually, supposedly, it was because they were goofing around in the studio, and his brother actually was a stutterer, and uh, he was kind of making fun of it, which he felt kind of guilty later when the song became a hit. But for a good ending is supposedly Brother Gary, I lost the stutter before the song came out. And he's got kind of a Van Morrison like singing in some of that, the song. But uh, I don't know, I've always liked it. Very, very catchy. Uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, of course, he came from the Guess Who. But, right. uh, yeah, it's a good pick. My number one, uh, surprise, surprise, is The Joker by Steve Miller. I uh, always like this song, uh, the bluesy, the killer slide guitar here. Just has that classic 70s vibe I associate with uh, Steve Miller here. Some, I know you mentioned some of these terms. Like some people call it the space cowboy. Some people call me the gangster love, Maurice. And I like the chorus. I'm a picker. I'm a grinner. I'm a lover and I'm a sinner. I play my music in the sun. I'm a joker, a smoker, midnight toker. I get my loving on the run. And then that slide guitar comes in. Uh, and then you mentioned the, the other line from uh, early, the Clover song here. You're the cutest thing that I ever did see. Really love your peaches, want to shake your tree. Lovey-dovey, lovey-dovey all the time. So it's got a lot of different interesting hooks and choruses in it within one song. And uh, I like it. What can I say? I, I'm a big Steve Miller guy, especially back then. It was a toss up between that and Band on the Run, which was going to get my number one spot. And I decided to go with uh, Steve. So very cool. Let's look at our uh, honorable mentions here as well. Five songs that did not make it to number one. What do you have for us? Yeah. Well, before we get to that, I was going to say that Band on the Run and was going i was going back and forth on what was i was going to have oh, yeah, one. yeah it was tough but uh well the, the ones i had are come monday by jimmy buffett oh nice the fan hit we only made it to number 58 uh must have got lost by the jay giles band which only made it to number 12 i actually prefer the the version that's on the live album blow your face out which is a really great version too but uh um, the third one I had is Working at the Car Wash Blues by Jim Croce. Uh, this is the up-tempo one that I really like by him. Made it to number yeah. 32. Uh, number four for me, the, the Real Me by The Who. <laughs> I made it to number 92. Uh, Quadrophenia, which is probably my second favorite Who album. But uh, that's what it is, is what it is, I guess. And the last one I wrote down is Sweet Home Alabama by Leonard Skinner that uh, made it to number eight. Yeah, very good. I like all those choices. My number five is Come and Get Your Love by Redbone. I, I always like that song. I made it to number five. Uh, I, I threw this next one in because it was massively popular and still is. It's not that it's a favorite of mine, but I thought it would, should be recognized. And I actually thought it was a number one song until we went back and did this. And that's Radar Love by Golden Earring, number 13. Can't believe it wasn't a top 10 hit the way they play it now. Uh, number 25, Piano Man, Billy Joel. Classic Billy Joel song. Number 32, Already Gone by the Eagles. I had to get an Eagles song in there. And my last one is American Tune, Paul Simon, number 35. I like that song a lot. Those are great ones. Yeah. I wanted to just single them. I like the Sweet Home Alabama. I come Monday. I didn't. 
I didn't see that in my listing, or I might have mentioned that because that's one of my favorite Jimmy Buffett tunes as well. So this was fun. Next week, we're going to end our series. We're going to have 1975, and again, another 35 songs, I believe, two weeks in a row. We're going to have to suck it up and go through some dreck, and hopefully there'll be some good ones at the end of the rainbow. I haven't looked ahead yet, but I know there are 35 songs again next week, so uh, we'll be... Uh, doing those once more and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next as far as another series that Randy and I can combine on. Maybe we'll drag Sam or Glenn in. I don't know yet, but this was a lot of fun. Uh, even with the bad songs, it's good to reminisce and go back and turn back the clock. Make sure you subscribe to Randall Nelson's channel. I've told you guys before, great channel in the VC. He does sports beat with Glenn and I every week. Plus he's got the massive collection. He knows a lot about a lot of things and uh, does contests and just a great channel, great member of the vinyl community. So be sure to sub him up. I'll leave a link below. Like, subscribe to our uh, channel, our videos, and uh, leave some comments with your lists, your top 10 at the very least. If you don't want to go through 35 songs, I understand. But give us some <laughs> of your favorites, uh, some underrated songs, maybe some songs you can't believe didn't make the number one position, like a, maybe a Piano Man or whatever the case may be, or Sweet Home Alabama. All right, so for Randy, this is Rich. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Take care.